Hello and welcome to another jungle tutorial on this Gameplay Monday. With a lot of talk in the comments about Rek'Sai and Kha'Zix, what with Kha'Zix being nerfed from his earlier OP-ness in the season, as well as Rek'Sai being slightly forgotten due to her effect in pro play all those years, I thought it would benefit us all, including myself, to look at a very high level game, specifically around D2 and Korea, having a look at the strong early and mid games that Kha'Zix and Rek'Sai can have, where they both can get really fed doing slightly different things, but then a decision or two that can really affect the outcome of a game. And as with last week's versus gameplay video, we will have the real time for both junglers shown as we go through the game and look at both sides of the story. We begin off with Kha'Zix's team going straight for that cheeky invade. Now remember, make sure you're guarding entrances if you're filled if you're not playing jungle. Don't sit in your tower and do nothing and think about what kind of rice you want for dinner. Sit in the tri bush, sit in the entrance of the river, put a ward down, defend. Is if you see someone coming, you can back out, of course, but if you know they're there, that's much better than just sitting and becoming the first blood. After that happens, Rexai starts red, Kha'Zix starts blue, and they actually take two routes that I showed in my Jungle Roots video a couple months ago. Rexai is gonna go from red to Raptors to topside Scuttle, and then look to gank, whereas Kha'Zix is going to go blue, Grump, take the bottom side Scuttle Crab, and then move straight across mid lane to get the top side one. However, as you can see, Rexai's decision to have an earlier impact in Kha'Zix nets her the the first blood on the enemy top lane Aatrox. This is nice, she hangs around to help push the lane, burns his TP, and I can fall back into her own jungle, whereas Kha'Zix has moved across the mid lane, and even though he had no idea Rexha was going to gank top, he knows once he gets her that of course the Scuttle Crab is going to be gone, and there's no point invading just because he won't have lane priority and the Aatrox will never be able to help him out. So with that done, of course Rexha now has an experience advantage, can do her whole top side, while Kha'Zix does the red and the raptors. Now Kha'Zix needs to look to make an impact as well. This the game was very interesting just because it was high level pathing from both sides as well as both junglers having that response to action decision making. If someone does something, I need to do something in kind. So Kha'Zix goes to the mid lane, attempts a gank on the fiddlesticks and isn't able to make anything come of it. And this is where we have some interesting pathing from both junglers. Rek'Sai decides she's gonna go back. Kha'Zix decides, well, if Rek'Sai has done all the butt side and gone to the top side and ganked, she most likely might have gone back. So Kha'Zix begins to move down through the enemy's jungle and wants to gank on that bot lane. And after Kha'Zix checks Rek'Sai's Raptors to see that they're down, that's good information, and begins to move down, I want you to look at Kha'Zix's minimap while also looking at the Rek'Sai's positioning. Rek'Sai is sitting further behind the wave, behind the wall, and in such a way that she isn't revealed on the minimap. She has good understanding of where the vision line is. Now if you watch my top 7 vision tricks video, you know I talked about the vision line and moving with the minion waves to try and avoid it but she's doing it in a much different position, much further up the lane. And because of this, there's no way that the enemy team knows where Rek'Sai is at this moment. So even as Kha'Zix manages to move on down and get a kill in the enemy bot lane, we've got that Newton's third law action reaction going on with Rek'Sai says, well, okay, I need to gank in the mid lane now. So she uses her sneaky vision pathing to go around to the bot side river and then ease on up to try and get a knockup on the Yasuo. And of course the threat of that W knockup means Yasuo flashes out for safety. Because once you hit that fear and knockup chain CC on Yasuo, he could very easily die very quickly. So because of this gank and the fact that Kha'Zix managed to push out the wave the bot side and because Kha'Zix checked the raptor camps before he moved to the bot side he sees that they have respawned and moves on up to try and get a counter jungle assuming the Rexa would also go back because as soon as they press tab on each other they'll see that neither of them has actually gone to buy yet so they're both sitting on a lot of gold so the only advantage that they have over each other is an experience now they sort of dance around the 1v1 it's a case of we don't want to engage because we need to see who's the lane priority first Fiddlesticks has moved on over so is Yasuo Fiddlesticks helps E the raptor camp for Rek'Sai to help clear it quicker. Rek'Sai smites the big raptor, and because Rek'Sai dings level 5 and Kha'Zix is level 4, he has to back out. There's no point in taking this fight when you're down a level, even if the Fiddlesticks is lower mana, the enemy bot lane will be coming and respawning soon. It's an unnecessary risk. You've got the ward, you've got the camp timer, that's great. Now of course to complete the first full clear and maximize her experience advantage, Rek'Sai goes down to take the Krugs, while Bard has moved on up to help the Kha'Zix clear some vision out around the mid lane. So with that done, Rakan gets a little bit too aggressive, thinking he can just sort of poke out the Bard and delay his return to lane, but unfortunately the Kha'Zix is still there, he knows this, it's an aggressive play, and he pays for it by dying because he has to go into the Dragon Pit, he has no flash left, and it's a free kill. But in this situation now, the Kha'Zix can bait. Because it's a 3v1 from the perspective of Kha'Zix's team, so what Rek'Sai does is because that tribush is warded, she sits back, she waits, Kha'Zix goes really aggressive, he flashes over the dragon pit, and it's an excellent bait by Kaiser. Rek'Sai's right there, W knockup, auto attack, hit the Q, get some damage on the bard with Kaiser, and then 
Notice how Krexai wants to Q-snipe the Bard. She doesn't hit directly because the dragon's right there that will let him get away. She moves to the side a little bit and then basically curves the shot around to hit the Bard. Nice free double kill. Excellent bait. Well done for staying around. Reacting immediately as soon as that fight happened. She didn't finish her Krugs. As soon as I saw the Rakan die and the fact that Kaiser could bait out a fight, she moved on over. They chase the Swain back up through the jungle and pull away as Kha'Zix has already respawned and is moving on down. It's a good sense of having that eternal clock. They timed, they watched the death timer for Kha'Zix. They knew how long it takes for him to come all the way back into the jungle. Very simple. Now I'll admit this is a bit of a problem for me, but when I see him level 4 and the second buffs are spawning, I feel like I've done something wrong. You need to eliminate that from your thinking, because Kha'Zix made all the right plays. He was aggressive, he got a gank off. Got another kill on the roaming support, and yes, he made an over-aggressive play, underestimating the location of the Rek'Sai, but his prioritization over affecting the map rather than just farming was good. Rek'Sai just managed to farm as well as have that impact and be in the right position at the right time. Nevertheless, you know you have the catch-up XP just slightly, and you can always get back that experience through a different play. So in this case, Rek'Sai does her red, Kha'Zix does the blue, and now Rek'Sai wants to move into the river, but again, an excellent roam by the Bayat support. That's what Bayat's do, they're picking up the meeps everywhere, and they're also looking to get deep vision. So the chunk by Bard is really, really nice, and Rek'Sai is now forced to go the long way around because Rek'Sai is trying to help the Fiddlesticks versus Yasuo. And because of that, Yasuo solo kills the Fiddlesticks, and now Rek'Sai's plan is simply to wave clear, absorb that crucial experience, get level 6, and carry on about away. However, Kha'Zix sees this, and a lot of junglers say things like, hey, you know, I can't gank your lane, you're pushing. Well, look at the HP of the enemy, look at the minion wave, can you tower dive? Kha'Zix decides to E in, however, Rek'Sai plays it very nicely, W's him up in the air, autos before activating her Q, gets a bite down, and the tower shot along with that equals a dead Kha'Zix. Yasuo is able to finish off the Rek'Sai, but not before Rek'Sai steals a kill herself. Very nicely done, the best of a bad situation. Fiddlesticks then TP's in and they can chase down the Yasuo and do whatever they need to. So with both junglers dead, and they're respawning at the same time approximately, Kha'Zix still level 5, what is the next play for them? Well, in Rexa's case, the Raptors will spawn for the third time, so she's going to go straight there. For Kha'Zix's case, he's going to go to his topside jungle, get the red buff, as well as his second rotation spawns. And because of this move by Rexa, it's probably not the best thing to do. It gives Kha'Zix the ability to set up the next few minutes that ultimately give him the head-to-head -head lead. So while Rek'Sai goes and does the Raptors and the Krugs, Kha'Zix has done his Raptors, hit level 6, evolved the Q, and now can easily punish a pushing solo Fiddlesticks with no flash. Very, very easy for him to do. Unachievable because of the increased range on the Q as well as the isolation damage. So now what Kha'Zix does with his fresh double buffs is moves to invade the enemy's topside jungle. Knowing full well that Fiddlesticks isn't there and he will have the lane priority. You see Aatrox and Yusuo come with him. They put a pink ward down in the topside bush there, close to mid lane. He takes the blue buff away. Aatrox has also warded around the Grump. And thanks to an excellent pink ward around the mid lane, they see Rek'Sai is on the bottom side still. Kha'Zix knows he can then easily gank the top side without any fear of a counter gank. And even though Rek'Sai moves up through the mid lane to defend the first tower falling down, that gank burns Jax's flash and creates a lot more pressure than Rek'Sai, who in this time that Kha'Zix has taken Raptors, ganked mid, taken blue buff and ganked top, Rek'Sai has simply taken Raptors and Krugs much less efficient use of time and completely let up on the early pressure that she had. So as Rexa returns back into her jungle looking to clear camps or make some sort of impact, she goes across the ward by the Gromp and then she walks straight across the pink ward placed by the red bush and she doesn't look at the bush, she's looking only in the mid lane looking to gank it and completely misses that she walked over a pink ward. Now Kha'Zix uses this time to take the wolves away instead of immediately moving to counter gank and of course Yasuo didn't see Rek'Sai go over the ward they put down which means that even though he gets ganked here Kha'Zix is there for the counter gank along with the Aatrox TP to finish him off. The whole team collapsed into the Rek'Sai, collapsed into the Fiddlesticks because of those two deep vision wards and it seemingly only Yasuo <laughs> didn't see Rek'Sai coming. Although it was a good use of the flash knockup and ult by Rek'Sai to secure the kill. But now again Rek'Sai made those plays, hasn't gotten another camp, managed to get one gank off and is dead. And Kha'Zix in this meantime has taken double the amount of camps and now because Rek'Sai is down can move on over and take another objective, the dragon. So after taking the dragon, Kha'Zix takes his bottom side camps of Grump and the Wolves, Rek'Sai respawns and heads to the top side because his top side scuttle is in fact spawning, but those wards placed earlier when Kha'Zix was taking the Wolves as well as when Rek'Sai was just on the bottom side, again still gives vision. It's a gift that keeps on giving. Please ward people. You see the Rek'Sai again go to the top side, Kha'Zix knows exactly where she is, he knows the scuttle crab is spawning, and he knows at this point he's probably slightly stronger. Even though 
I know I do emphasize the extended sequence of staying out further than you think you need to, to continue the impact and continue the pressure, but you do have to remember that Kha'Zix hasn't spent any of his gold yet, but he knows that Rexa has used her ultimate in the mid lane, she used her flash, and given this information, he believes he can win the 1v1. So it's an aggressive move, especially going in blind, but we get the 1v1 void showdown we wanted. It's a really well played fight for both sides, Kha'Zix uses his assassin in and out gameplay, Rek'Sai is poked with a Q, Kha'Zix is poked with his W, he hits a Q and an order before using the ultimate to create some distance. Rek'Sai has used a knockup, hit an order, hit some Qs, has max fury at the moment. So as Kha'Zix goes back in, Rek'Sai is of course going to try and bite to get that maximum damage down, but Kha'Zix hits his E, hits a Q, because he only went in once he had that cooldown up again, and that isolated burst damage from Kha'Zix is a little greater than the E bite from Rek'Sai. And that's of course without Kha'Zix spending his gold, so you can imagine how it would have gone had he had a few more items. But nonetheless played quite well by Rek'Sai. And unfortunately the significant difference in ward potential this game once again helps the one jungler who does place a deep pink ward, in this case a Kha'Zix, with a lot more information which lets him objective leads and that's the most important thing. So once Rek'Sai respawns, Lazy just goes straight to the Raptors, hasn't bothered with the top side, doesn't have another pink in the inventory. Kha'Zix on the other hand's taken the red, he's taken the scuttle, he's put more deep wards, and because of the roaming by the red team, Rek'Sai ends up caught in the middle of a fight, gets taken out and is once again off the map, and with that information Kha'Zix secures a free Rift Herald, and of course also holds the top side tower from being taken by the Jax, while the Aatrox is otherwise engaged. And I think at this point you can honestly say that Kha'Zix has won this head to head, he secured way more objectives, much better vision control, and made a few more plays here and there in terms of ganks that netted his team a significant bigger advantage. The solo kill on Fiddlesticks, or in this case, even though we're fast forwarded a few minutes and they're just farming their jungles, as Kha'Zix is coming down, he sees a sliver of Kaiser show up, flashes in, all ends her, and gets another kill, while Rek'Sai is up doing her wolves in topside camps. Again, Kha'Zix taking action, Rek'Sai farming camps. A big difference from the early game where Rek'Sai got that level 3 gank, got that counter gank in the bot side and looked to be more in control. The decision to go bottom lane after that tower dive really hurt Rek'Sai because that's when Kha'Zix used that time to get deep vision, steal a blue buff and it set the traps for the next few minutes. And yes, the blue team did have a really nice team fight that got Kai'Zip at fed and would have given them a lot of shutdown gold, but it wasn't enough to offset the objective deficit that they had. And once that fight was over and everyone respawned, Kha'Zix heads straight to the top side and is able to 1v1 the Jax, while the Rek'Sai has to go bot side and it takes three people to kill the Aatrox. So even though they kill the Aatrox and try to take the bot side tower, Rek'Sai and the Yasuo, because Rek'Sai could solo kill the Jax, they have activated the Rift Herald and now they're hard pushing top lane. Basically after this, the overall gold lead was a bit too much and of course Rek'Sai got outscaled by Kha'Zix heavily, as is the case usually. So even though Rek'Sai did play to a high level in the first few minutes, one bad decision to go and take bot side camps to get the full clear led to basically all the plays that happened after that, including a very close one-to-one -one battle between her and Kha'Zix. If she had won that, you could probably say there might have been something else she could have done, but the heavier focus on Kha'Zix on pressure rather than farming gave his team more of a lead as well as his control of the vision game. Okay, so given this was a Diamond 2-ish Korean game, hopefully you're able to learn a bit more about how they combo and path and emphasize vision control as well as objective focus. And I'm sure applying these principles in your games will definitely help you gain a few more wins. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and comment if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more similarly structured tutorials. Subscribe for much more League of Legends content coming very soon. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.